This episode was brought to you by CambodiaSoulmate.com because sometimes you need to travel the world to find your soulmate. Hello, members of the Pride, and welcome to a brand new series, 80 Days. Now, I've started it in this way because there's no actual loading screen. Uh, there's no, like, press start to, uh, to, you know, start a new game. No, nothing like that. It actually, you, you double-click the icon to, to start the game, and this is where you are. Uh, the, the name of the game is 80 Days. It's based, it's based off of the uh, Jules Verne novel Around the World in 80 Days, except that this is a steampunk version of it. Um... Uh, which I thought was was pretty clever. Um, I, I've played this once through. Uh, I wasn't originally going to do a series on it, but I had so much fun with this. Um, and it was so cleverly done uh, that I just decided I was going to go ahead and do a series on this. And I'm going to share it with you now. Um, <clears throat> just so you know, this game doesn't stop. Um, you, once you start it, you have to continue to the end of it because you're you're... It's around the world in 80 days, and time keeps ticking. Um, so once I click the, it would seem, here, the game begins. And um, so what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do uh, my typical uh, intro and outro for each one of these episodes. Uh, I'm basically just going to be cutting it off uh, somewhere between the 20 and 25 minute mark on each one. Uh, depending on how the the end footage kind of ends up. Um, and then I'll just sort of, I'll do my outro at the very end of the series, of course, as usual. Uh, but the, all the uh, episodes in between them, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be stopping to do the, the intro and outro that I usually do. So uh, we're playing it straight through. I hope you guys enjoy this. I know I am. Uh, this is a this is a genuinely uh, clever uh, game. I have to say, I was I was surprised when this got put on my put on my desk here. Um, I should say that this game was brought to you by CambodiaSoulmate.com. Uh, they're the ones who got this game for me and suggested it to me. I kind of when I first heard Eighty Days, I'm like, oh, it's a game based off of uh, you know the Jules Verne novel. Okay, well this should be okay, I guess. I, I enjoy it a lot more than I thought I would. So thank you to CambodiaSoulmate.com. Um, and if you guys like them, go check them out. Uh, and let's get started. London, 1872. I have entered into the service of a new gentleman. It would seem he is a gambling man. I, I'm also a little gunky today, so bear with me. Yeah, this this game uh, really challenges your knowledge of uh, world geography. Uh, the first time I, the first time I tried it, uh, I, I genuinely like I got lost a few times. Eighty days. Novel by Jules Verne. And let's begin. Now, one thing I am going to do, I'm going to occasionally have to stop uh, my my video every once in a while because uh, I have been noticing that my audio sync for my webcam versus my audio uh, in the game starts getting thrown off. I don't know why it is. So uh, I've got my little you know, phone set to, to remind me every once in a while that I need to stop the camera and start it again. Um, so if you see uh, occasionally me kind of getting down here and, 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 and you know, stopping the game and, stop, and, and you see like pauses that don't seem to make a lot of uh, sense, that's what I'm doing. So bear with me. <coughs> My master returned home from the reform club with a strange gleam in his eye. Passepartout, he said, or said he, we are going around the world. Pack my hunting rifle and my evening jacket. There's not a moment to waste. 
You, Passepartout, now have funds. Oh no, it didn't do the whole thing! Oh no! Uh, well see, because I've already beaten this game once, and so I, I guess it's, uh... I was kind of... Wow! Oh, this is different! Okay! Rifle, uh... European train, or evening jacket. Uh, evening jacket. And, because see how it's going? I, I gotta... I, I, I can't dink around too much here. Alright, and then embark. And go! The Amphitrite... Am, Am, Amphitrite. Amphitrite Express. See, the originally, the, the, the opening was much different for the first time around. Oh, darn, you guys are gonna miss it. We leapt aboard the A-25 from Charing Cross as the final whistle shrieked its warning. Our journey had begun. Let's converse. Greetings, Monsieur Verne. Monsieur Verne? Jules Verne? <laughs> Passepartout, did you say your name was? What a curious appellation. I'm very interested in Paris. My uncle saw the opening of the Orient Express from Paris to Munich. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the Orient Express is is a possibility there. Maybe we'll take the Orient Express. Uh, what about, let's see, how about uh, to, to Cambridge? Not, uh, do you enjoy romances? Sure. They're most diverting. I despise them. I have no time for events. <laughs> okay, uh, how about to Nice? Is it possible to travel to Nice? I believe so. I met a, I met a man who used to talk about the Pyrenees Express from Paris to Nice. Okay. Uh, how about Nice to Rome? Is it possible to go to, to Nice from Rome? Absolutely. I met a woman designed parts for the Blue Line Ferry from Nice to Rome. Okay, good. <coughs> so, having conversations and interacting with the people in the game opens up new routes for you to go because of course you're trying to travel the globe in 80 days the amphitrite express rattled along narrow gauge rails to dover where its fins extended and it plunged directly into the channel monsieur fogg made no remark as the dark water pressed against our windows i thought it so marvelous at the time but how many mar uh, marvels were still to come Bear in mind, this is all steampunk. Uh, this is so it's not um, it, it's not of the same time period uh, that the original novel was made. We splashed up onto the rails at Calais and closed the remaining miles to Paris Gare du Nord uh, quickly. Boy, I hope I'm saying that right. According to today's paper, Monsieur Fogg remarked, the Orient Express now runs as far as Bucharest. Okay, you know what? We might do the rest, uh, but we'll do it. We'll do it in, in bits and pieces. Ah, the 45 caliber rifle will burn us well here. Okay, how much would it burn? Okay, 500. Okay, that's not bad. Um, okay, valuable here in in the Thessaloniki, Venice, and Odessa. Ooh, maybe we want to wait for Venice. That's worth not. Ooh, wait, that's. That's even better. Maybe we'll go to Copenhagen instead. We'll go ahead and do that. Get this and we'll head to Copenhagen. Uh, I'm interested. There are some items that, that can help you for different things. I'll go ahead and buy this. For, uh, different things open different uh, different options on your map. So, uh, okay. Oh, wait, no, 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 mark it. Um, let's, do I want to explore? Yes, let's explore. Okay, so we've discovered Amsterdam because we want to go to Copenhagen because we want to sell the wine. Money is a real issue in this game. You're not only you're not only going uh, trying to beat the clock, you're also having to maintain your funds uh, because you got to spend money to travel the world. The Exposition Universelle spawned over uh, the grounds of the purpose-built Palais du Champ de Mars. Uh, hot air balloons sail gently across the sky, and the powdery light of the Yablakov candles seemed in, gleamed invitingly. I'm going to butcher the, uh, a lot of words today, guys. Bear with me. I was flooded with memories of the Siege of Paris and my own small part of it. I suppressed my memories of the Siege and visited the Exposition. Memories of the Siege were too painful, and I stayed locked up in my room. Uh, suppressed my memories of the Siege visited the Exposition. 
I headed toward the red and purple tents of the Artifers, uh, Avenue of Nations, or to the airship hangar. Let's go to the Artificers Guild. <clears throat> I headed towards the purple and t uh, red and purple tents of the Artificers Guild, draped with banners and blazoned with their copper lily sigil. sigil. Uh, a steam-powered automaton orchestra played me blast instruments, or it had the most incredible display of machines. Let's do orchestra. Uh, played gleaming brass instruments while mechanical sommelier, sommelier uh, popped a cork from a champagne pot and po poured out bubbling glasses for passing tourists. One of the artificers was explaining the credo's, uh, guild's credo to a group of sticky figured chingle children or had his hands deep inside a human shaped automaton. I'm nervous about the sticky fingers. Uh, that that might be a th those might be thieves. Uh, how about hands deep inside a human size? A uh, human-shaped automaton, rummaging through its clockwork innards. He took out a piece of engraved glass and peered at it with a jewel, jeweler's loop. Dash it, thing, he cursed in upper-class uh, English tones, and then looked up. Oh, hello. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. What are you doing? Or I pointed at the shard. What is that? I pointed at the shard. What is that? It's the control glass of my automaton, or it would be if it worked. This one is meant to be a cook, but it can't even fry a chip. Uh, how does the glass work? He looked pained for a moment. It's complicated, he replied. Light scatters and bends and... Never mind. In this case, it doesn't work. I need a Persian engraver. The best work is done in Tehran, you know. Uh, do you cook yourself? I stared at the inanimate automaton, or I wished him luck. Um, do you cook yourself? Not a jot, the artificer replied tearfully, and then stroked his mustache. Uh, do you suppose that's the fly in the ointment? He thumped me on the back. Good thought, old chap. Perhaps I'll go and find myself a cook to model my autom auto automaton on. The artificer smiled. I wished him well in his culinary endeavors, or I was rather skeptical of his ambition. I wished him well in his culinary endeavors. <clears throat> he was at least in the right city to find a cook, true enough, and returned to the center of the exposition, ears ringing with the bombastic tunes of the steam orchestra. Avenues sprawled in every direction between the inviting inviting illuminated pavilions of the exposition. Uh, Avenue of Nations or airship hangar, airship hangar. I went west towards the airship hangar, past a booth with a husband and wife pair selling panoramic hot air balloon rides to eager tourists. I inquired as to their hourly rate, wondering if perhaps the balloon could be encouraged to go a little way east as well and contribute to our great journey. 80 pounds for a half-hour flight. Not today, I think, or I gasped. That's robbery. Uh, not today, I think, I replied swiftly. The man nodded and moved on to the next punter with great swiftness. I regarded the airships that filled the hangar beneath him, or I regarded the airships that filled the hangar behind him. There were a huge number of dis on display uh, all, from all over the world, and my eye was immediately caught by, oh boy, African-made rigid metal balloon, gilded Egyptian Ifrit-class airship, metal-clad four-propeller sav Savar car at Atmodic, the bulky coal gas-powered uh, Ottoman Gaic, or the twin-bladed Peruvian gyrocopter. How about the four-propeller, whatever that is, with its red and yellow painted hull? They use the power of the sun, you know, uh, remarked the lady of, uh, at the stand. No fuel at all. A little for takeoff and for emergencies. They have rainy seasons in India, and they don't want their whole feet grounded. Atmodics such as this sailed the skies of British India, near the Delhi home of their inventor, Amula, Amulia Zavaka. I'm gonna, guys, I'm gonna butcher everything. Uh, perhaps one day soon, Monsieur Frog and I would find ourselves flying in such a craft. I returned to the exposition center, my thoughts turning with clouds and engine rotors. Crowds of tourists jostled and heaved past. Their eyes wide with wonder. Uh, I took a stroll down the Avenue of Nations. There you go. Lined with buildings in the styles of the nations of the world and manned by foreign delegates in national dress. Uh, although the newly formed German Empire was a cons uh, conspicuous absentee or most eclectic site. Uh, a most eclectic site. 
The Austro-Hungarian delegation was being harangued by an artificer, or the Zulu Federation had built a... Uh, harangued by an uh, artificer, who looked to me like a farm boy from Provence. The artificer was pointing at one of the soldiers guarding the doorway and shouting in terrible German, German, Verboten! Verboten! I peered at the soldier, or what is the matter here? Um, I peered at the soldier, who was sporting rather a fine mustache and gleam, gleaming uniform so spotless that it looked almost polished, mailed. With a start, I realized that he was no man at all, but rather an automaton, with an enamel-painted enamel uniform and pewter face. The artificer cursed. These Austro-Hungarians have brought their automata soldiers to Paris, even though war machines are expressly forbidden by the guild. Who knows what danger they might uh, represent? I turned away hurriedly. My feet were tiring, and the hour was growing late. I returned to Monsieur Fogg, who was eating a meal of plain boiled beef a la, a la Langaise. Did you enjoy the, expedi enjoy the expedition, exposition? My master inquired diffidently, uh, as though I had been out visiting a great agent, uh, agent great aunt, having preferred a hearty meal in English newspaper, and I nodded. Um, uh, as if I had been out visiting a great aunt, rather than witnessing all the wonders that the modern world had to offer. Nothing could possibly impress me now. We are unspeakably lucky to live in such an age of invention. We will travel. Will we travel by airship? Do you suppose, or do you think we will encounter artificers? Uh, will we travel by airship? Do you suppose? I think it highly likely. And we replied, "They are expensive, but extremely fast." I dreamed that night of mechanical wonders and automatons with beautifully enameled faces, knowing little of the strange inventions and stranger peoples I would soon encounter in my journey around the world. All right, talk is, clock is ticking. We must decide our next steps. Uh, well, uh, I think we know what we gotta do. Uh, boy, that's really tempting to, to just take that over there, but I have something that can be, that I can sell really well in Ant. Oh no, it's Copenhagen. Uh, oh, ah! Wrong one. Uh, no, I want Amsterdam. Ah, shoot. Okay, uh,. I mean, no, I'm on Copenhagen. I went here. So I need to go this way. Okay, so it arrives tomorrow before 5 o'clock. So let's just go ahead and we will hit a hotel. We took a hotel for the night. We will be comfortable here, Monsieur Fogg remarked, but traveling overnight will, be, will often be, be more efficient. So we must board the longest journeys available, or where possible. Where possible. We cannot travel where it is entire, uh, where it is not possible. Certainly, he replied. Still, the surrounds of the Hotel Ritz were most enjoyable. All right. Uh, let's. Okay. So. Nice. Yeah, we want Amsterdam. Uh, okay. Can we negotiate to see? No, we can't. Okay. We just gotta go. All right, so we're going by private car this time. And now, if you remember, I bought something that said open road. Uh, that's because I figured we were going to be doing some car travel. Um, later on, I'm going to see if I can get some railway gear. Because um, the, the more gear you have uh, that's appropriate for the type of travel, the more... Um, that good old Monsieur Fogg here, Phineas Fogg, uh, is okay. His health here... Uh, can go down. It's even possible to kill him if you're not careful. Um, so we're going to be we're going to be uh, try looking out for his health. Uh, we found a member of the Coachmakers Guild to carry us to Amsterdam. She loaded a case onto the back, stroked the boiler, and took off at high speed along a coastal road, swerving around each corner with considerable skill. And I think a touch of reckless recklessness, some bleed our discomfort, or a touch of showmanship. Uh, a touch of showmanship. I clung on tight. This would be a terrific ride. My character is now polished. Converse. Greetings, driver. I cannot drive well if you're talking to me. Amsterdam. Uh, what can you tell me of Amsterdam? They still grow the best turnips in... No, tulips in Amsterdam, no question. Okay, we want Amsterdam to Copenhagen. Yes, Copenhagen can be reached from Amsterdam by local hire car. Ha ha. Okay. Uh, then from Copenhagen, 
uh, probably to Berlin, maybe. Have you heard that buyers in Bucharest will pay fantastic amounts for beautifully made music boxes from Berlin? Aha, good to know. All right, drive the car. Once or twice, the metal wheel, metal rimmed wheels lifted the chassis clear from the road on one side, only to bump down after a chuff and puff more of the engine. We were jolted around like so much poultry. We must have topped 40. Uh, we must have topped 40. Perhaps even 50 miles an hour. Scandalously fast. A fabulous way to travel or a ghastly state of affairs. A fabulous way to travel. The Polish inventor Bozek, who had first attached a perfectly decent locomotive engine underneath a flimsy wooden crate, was clearly a genius. Uh, such cars were growing in popularity. My good friends, if I were not destined to be a valet until the day I die, until I day I have gray hairs in my ears, uh, such parent cars were growing in popularity. Starting from their use in farmsteads and extending up through the classes, it is said the king of Sweden now drove one. There were those who said such cars would soon be privately owned. <gasps> my goodness! Uh, king of Sweden now drove one. <clears throat> Though presumably only to show solidarity with solidarity with the beleaguered potato farmers, as we rattled along, I spoke to our driver about what lay ahead and learned that you could pick up Viking drinking horns in Copenhagen that would sell for a fortune in Bucharest. Ooh, I'm learning all this good stuff. This is good. Um, see, what you learn and what you can get and such really, really is varied. So. Why you constantly have to kind of stay on top. Ooh, black tulip bulb worth 4,300 in Athens. Heck yeah, we're buying that. All right. Uh, do we have a plan? We do not have a plan. Uh, no, stop that. Uh, we need to stop and explore because we need to find the route to Copenhagen. Though the people of Amsterdam move about it, uh, its canal side streets with a sense of optimism and good cheer, uh, I felt no pressing need to linger. One look at their buildings tells another story. Our mission left us a little time for exchanging pleasantries. Uh, one look at their buildings tells another story. Perhaps 200 years ago, uh, this was the center of the world, but these gays, tulips are no longer considered more valuable than gold. The Zulu diamond fields have drawn away the trade. Uh, uh, diamond fields. And the importance of Amsterdam is a little faded. I sympathize, Ben Sieur. Uh, the, the Paris, Paris's own position has been precarious since the war with Prussia, that debacle with Napoleon. Uh, the war with Prussia. Which did not, to put it mildly, resolve in our favor. Would I walk along the Seine, Seine one day, thinking back to our days of lost glory? I approach the street peddler. I, don't know if, uh, I approach the street peddler. For advice, who greeted me with a cheerful smile beneath a caterpillar-like mustache. Uh, what's the fastest way on from here? Uh, what? We're going around the world! Aha! You are like the influenza! <laughs> the peddler reached into his pocket. Buy an apple? One pound? I bought it. And took it with a smile. Uh, what's the fastest way on from here? Car, I suppose. The roads are good. The canals used to be better, but now they seem almost out of date. He sighed. It's a curse to be rich in the past. By the time the future rolls around, you're poor again. Uh, maybe you'll be rich again sometime, I remarked, more from sheer optimism than any true conviction. Uh, cheapest way out of the city? Most likely the hydrofoil heading, heading north to, to Norway. It's fine enough if you don't mind being jolted about, and it's not exactly going around the world unless you don't mind which way. Uh, is it fast? Two days, I think. I think the pedd peddler moved on. So many choices. Uh, all that remained was to choose how best to depart. <laughs> My funds have gone down a touch. A whole pound. I think I'm okay. Uh, all right. So, let's plan. We want to go to Copenhagen. <laughs> 